Okay, today we're going to take a look at something called VSEPR theory. Uh, VSEPR stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion Theory. And what this means is that molecules... are three-dimensional. It means that they take up space. So if I was going to ask you to give me the Lewis structure for a simple molecule like methane, you'd come up with something that looks like this. But unfortunately, this model is kind of limited because this is two-dimensional. We're looking at a flat screen here, and molecules are three-dimensional. Here's what that molecule really looks like. It looks like this. This is a molecule in three dimensions. And it does this because these uh, atoms are being orbited by electrons. Well, they're all like charges. And that means that they repel each other. That's electron pair repulsion. And that means that a two-dimensional model just isn't sufficient to show what's really going on here. We need to be thinking in three dimensions. And I'm going to show you how we do this. I'm also going to show you how to use this tool, which is called a uh, FET simulation. Uh, you really can't see it, but uh, I'll give you the link to this page. Let's remove all of these because we're going to start from scratch. And I'll show you what we're talking about. Let's use this molecule again because it's really simple. And we're concerned with the central atom and how many atoms are bonded to the central atom. Notice that we have one central atom here and we have one, two, three, four atoms bonded to the central atom. This is going to fit a generic model called a, B, 4. What this means is that we have one central atom, that's this guy, one central atom, and we have four bonded atoms. And this has a name, this shape, and we'll try to draw it, but drawing this can be difficult. But I'll show you how we do it. Let me get a translation of this shape. So I have just included this chart that shows something that we call molecular geometry. And it is uh, trying to link this code AB4 to this shape, tetrahedral. Uh, and anytime we have four atoms bonded to the central atom, we're going to have an AB4 molecule. This shape is tetrahedral. And I'm going to show you how we draw it. But if you use this three-dimensional generator, this guy here, uh, it uh, does the same thing. So we've got one central atom, and we're going to bond one, two, three, four atoms to the central atom and this is our tetrahedron it has this three-dimensional shape where the four atoms that are surrounding the central atom are as far away from each other as they can possibly get not 90 degrees as this model suggests but 109.5 degrees which is what this model suggests if we were going to try to draw this it gets kind of clunky but i'll show you how uh, we draw this um, in uh, chemistry. So we have our central atom. Oops. We have our central atom in the middle. And we will put a hydrogen on the top, 109.5 degrees away. We'll put another hydrogen. And we're kind of limited because this is a two dimensional screen. So to show three dimensions, I'm going to use this wedge shape to indicate a hydrogen that's coming out at us. And I'll draw it a little bit bigger. And then the terminology uses a kind of a dot structure 
a, a, a kind of a dotted line to show that this hydrogen is going away from us into the uh, screen away from us. So this shape is trying to show uh, this shape. So I don't know if you see it or not, but that's what we're trying to do. Okay. So I'm going to show you how we use this generator and some other examples. All right, let's take a molecule like this one. Uh, hang on just a second. All right, here's one that looks kind of familiar from the practice problems we did. This is boron trifluoride, and this is a molecule that violates the octet rule. And you guys know how to draw the Lewis structures for these, so your end product should look like this. And I'll draw it kind of evenly spaced these fluorine atoms out. This one's pretty useful because it uh, looks the same three-dimensionally as it does here on the screen, but what we have here is one central atom, that's the boron, and we have one, two, three atoms bonded to the central. And that is a format called AB3. AB3 because we have one center atom and we have three bonded atoms. So if we were going to look this up on our chart, we'd find a shape that looks like this. According to this chart, anything that has this format AB3, one center atom and three bonded atoms, is going to have this geometry, what we call trigonal planar. If we build it in our generator, it looks like this. One, two, three atoms bonded to our central. And these atoms are trying to get as far away from each other as they can. And that is an angle of 120 degrees. So however we turn this, these are still going to be <clears throat> as far away as they possibly can. Let's do one more and I think you'll get the hang of it. This is a molecule called ammonia. And if we were going to draw the Lewis structure for this, we'd put the nitrogen in the middle and we'd bond our hydrogens to each. And if we are using our Lewis structure theory, this has a total of eight electrons. And if we've used up six in the bonding, one, two, three, four, five, six, that leaves us with two extra. And we fill up the valences of the outermost atoms first, but hydrogen can only hold two, so they're going to go around the center atom. As we've seen before, this is something that we're going to call a lone pair. Well, all of a sudden, this matters because this has a new format. We're going to call this AB3E1. Your textbook will sometimes just refer to it as AB3E because in chemistry we typically don't use one if there's only one of something. We don't write one. What this means is that we have one center atom. We have three bonded atoms. And we have one lone pair. This is AB3E or AB3E1, and according to this chart, it has this geometry. The lone pair, one lone pair and three bonded atoms gives it this geometry, something called trigonal pyramidal. It's difficult to draw, but if we're using this convention, we've got three hydrogens. And they look like this. This hydrogen is coming out towards us. This one is going away from us. And on top is this lone pair. We're going to draw it like this. And we're going to call it by another name because it looks like a character in a book by Roald Dahl. And I don't know if you've ever heard of this book before, but it's the sequel to a book called Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It's called Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator. Read it, it's really good. But in this book there are some villainous aliens, and they're called Vermicious Canids, and they look like this. Hopefully you see the resemblance. 
in the book, vermicious canids are nasty people, and they're best to be avoided. So whenever we see a vermicious canid, we're going to avoid it. Here's what it looks like in our generator. An ammonia molecule has got one, two, three bonded pairs and one vermicious canid. You see him? See that spooky looking little dude right there on the top? So the vermicious canid acts just like another bonded atom in that it repels everybody uh, to the same angles. You might be uh, familiar with this 109.5 bond angle because vermicious canids act just like other uh, bonded pairs. They're to be avoided. They repel. So every time we see a vermicious canid, we're going to treat it just like a bonded pair. However, it doesn't appear in the molecule, so we don't really see it when we draw it. And that's why this is a tetrahedral molecule that's missing one bonded pair. So that's what this looks like. So when we're looking at our chart, this is a shape called trigonal pyramidal because it's kind of a pyramid shape if we ignore the vermicious canid and there's three of them. This takes a little bit of practice and uh, you want to keep in mind this chart so I'm going to give you the whole big chart it looks like this and be sure to keep an eye out for these guys because they're nasty. Okay. Best of luck and I'll see you on the next one.